This message has been brought to you by the Flat Earth Institute of Science. Yes, the Flat Earth Institute of Science. It's a very, very special institution and not everybody has what it takes to become a member. Here's a quick test to see whether you've got what it takes. Do you ever hold your hand up, put a glove on and then start to panic because you wonder why you can't see your fingers anymore? Maybe somebody's stolen them. If that is you, then you just might have what it takes to become a member of the Flat Earth Institute of Science. And today we're going to look at some of the finest work and it's all about the moon landing. There is a mountain of evidence that the moon landing was faked, but some of my absolute favorite evidence among all of that is the wet flag on the moon. Now, if you followed any of my channels for any period of time, you'll know that I'm used to covering people saying the most ridiculous things. Mass is identical to weight, but this mass, this weight is space weight. And I've covered people making the most ridiculous of predictions. If you were travelling from Scotland down to, uh, to London on a ball, it would be downhill all the way. You wouldn't need to put any petrol in your car. You'd just use your brakes. And I've also covered people saying the most surprising things. I'm pregnant. But I have never before seen such an example of sheer numnuttery that I saw on this video here on the Globebusters channel. Now, the video goes a little bit like this. They start off by trying to prove the moon landings were fake by taking a picture of a flag that clearly does not look wet and then telling us that this flag clearly looks wet. It's that simple. This is an image of the Apollo 17 moon landing flag. And I have an image title here in the bottom left corner for your convenience. As you can see, the flag is very clearly wet. And then, in a stroke of what I can only call flat earth genius, after saying that, they then play a clip of somebody who is supposedly on their side agreeing that nobody ever in history who's analysed a photograph has come to the conclusion that this clearly dry flag is actually wet. Everybody that has analysed and studied this photo in any way, shape or form has never looked at it and seen that it's wet. So in theory, that should be it. The flag clearly doesn't look wet. Nobody who's ever analysed the image has ever come to the conclusion that the flag is wet. But we are forgetting one thing. This message has been brought to you by the Flat Earth Institute of Science. Exactly. And at the Flat Earth Institute of Science, it doesn't matter what people see when they analyse the image or what the image obviously looks like. We can literally just say whatever the hell we want. You can see along here where the arrows are the line between the dry and the wet part of the flag. And of course, it's very obvious over here. It's even crinkled up almost like it just came out of a washing machine or a yes. rainstorm. Now, we'll get to the shading in a minute. But what I love about the Flat Earth Institute of Science is that, how can I put it? The nicest thing I can say is possibly they don't get bogged down in the need or necessity to connect chains of thought together in a logical manner. That's not something that bothers them. For example... They are quite happy to have us believe that the same people that were capable of faking this huge event and keeping it secret for so long were also stupid enough to run the flag through the washing machine and then not let it dry, but also were stupid enough to perform this hoax just outside in the rain. Yeah, you, you can see it if you study it. The, the harder you study it, the more you see it. And of course, when you realize that it's wet and it was raining, the entire set is wet. Now, I know what you're thinking. A, a sensible person might not want to suggest that this hoax was carried out outside in the rain because that might have been a little bit of a giveaway. But a sensible person isn't part of this group. This message has been brought to you by the Flat Earth Institute of Science. OK, so let's address what they think they're seeing here. But before we do that, I need to gather my thoughts. So here's a very quick musical interlude starring the star of last week's episode, Nathan Oakley. Take it away, guys. No, 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 no. Can't touch this. <sighs> anyway, uh, if you haven't subscribed by now, then you are certainly more mature than I am. So well done. Um, but subscribe anyway. Now, the flag itself 
Well, which is more likely? Is it more likely that the moon has no atmosphere, so the light that is hitting the flag hasn't been scattered by anything, which means that minor folds and wrinkles in the flag that would normally give only very small, subtle differences between light and dark areas are giving an exaggerated difference between these light and dark areas. Is that more likely? Or... Is it more likely that somebody put this flag through the washing machine, took it out, and then they carried out the rest of this performance while it was raining? I'll let you decide. Anyway, it turns out when you are a member of the Flat Earth Institute of Science that you have the ability to look at anything, not just flags, and claim it's wet. This, this to me looks like, you know, you've got like leftovers from water here. You see this, this well, looks like- It's so wet. Yeah. It's so wet. Now, of course, this type of behavior from flat earthers isn't surprising. You show a flat earther a picture and they will come to whatever conclusion they want to come to, no matter what is shown on that picture. Flat earthers jump into crazy conclusions, of course, is absolutely nothing new. We could be in a snow globe on somebody's desk. Yeah. So if, they, if we are on a ball, where is the only place that you can stand upright? North. At the North Pole. Yeah. Now, you won't be surprised to hear that when flat earthers make these claims, they also insist there's lots of evidence to back them up. For example, in this video here, they are talking about this land perhaps being wet. And one of the commentators says, well, I've got pictures from magazines that show over time this land dries out. And of course, even though they're making a video on this specific topic, the last thing that flat earther will ever, ever do is bring those pictures and that evidence to the table. If you look at the uh, backdrop, the so-called mountain, in, in this, when you're going through the Apollo 17 photos, as the ground in front dries out, then it starts to match the backdrop. And no evidence was provided. Now, another question the Flat Earth Institute of Science had in this video is, why were there muddy streaks on the windows? Do you want to tell me that those are not muddy water streaks on that window there? If this doesn't convince you that the moon landings were bogus, I don't know what will. Now, to be fair, that's not a bad question. I mean, I've been asked over the years far more silly things. Could clouds be made of salt? Who owns the moon? Which of the dwarves from Snow White was the tallest? Oh, how does a warp drive work on the Starship Enterprise? If you don't know where you live, you think you're ever going to know why you live there. You really believe everything fit in a dot smaller than a period on a page that exploded and formed everything? You might be saying, that guy, why would they even invent gravity then? Why is there mass? What is this shit about mass? But as fascinating as those questions were from those high IQ flat earth researchers, today we're dealing with this question. Do you want to tell me that those are not muddy water streaks on that window there? No, they are indeed dirty water streaks. Well done. There should be no excuse for these gray, muddy water streaks falling down the window out in the middle of outer space. Actually, there's a number of reasons they can form on Earth due to residue that's released during a launch. They can form as a traveling through the atmosphere, as water vapor condenses on the, the glass, or they can form in space due to something called outgassing, where gases that are released from the rocket can condense on the windows. Um, in fact, they're really, really, really common. So common that NASA have lots and lots of pictures of it, which you yourself even acknowledge. I think it is interesting how it is not just one photo we are looking at here but we actually see this in a series of photos directly on the NASA website that all oddly say no description. Yes, so what is more likely? Is it more likely that this is an obvious indicator of some kind of fakery, which NASA have deliberately put many, 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 many uh, photographs on on their website for the whole world to see? Or is it more likely that it's just what I said before and it's perfectly normal? Uh, I'll let you decide. A normal person will probably come to the conclusion I did. But then again, we're not dealing with normal people. This message has been brought to you by the Flat Earth Institute of Science. Anyway, they had one query left and that was apparently mud on the astronauts' suits. When you show people, like for example, the uh, mud on the spacesuits, what do they say? When they look at that, I mean, what, what excuse do they make when they, when they look at this? 
you know, what excuse do they have for that? Do they just say, well, it's just regular dirt or, or, you know, what? I haven't heard anybody tell me that it's, it's anything other than just dirt that is sticking to the suit, uh, static or whatever is causing moon, it. To moon dirt, dirt man. Hey, which, of course, is the correct answer on the surface of the moon. There is lots and lots of fine dust, which, because of static electricity, will stick to the suit. It's clingy, it smears. The astronauts definitely complained about it getting everywhere. But if you are a member of the Flat Earth Institute of Science, then you will come to a completely different conclusion altogether. And the conclusion that you will come to is that the astronauts deliberately smeared themselves in mud because they were just having a good time in the rain playing with each other in the mud. Well, I mean, the astronauts are showing this off. They yeah. deliberately they deliberately put that mud up on that sleeve and took that picture, and everybody thinks, oh, they're on the moon. They're not. They're just a bunch of, a couple of guys having fun in the mud, showing off a wet flag, and if you realize that it rained, Everything is wet. Yep. So, yeah. So here we are back at the flag again. Of course, this is very, very apparent that it's wet. And we've come back to the flag. It's obviously a full circle. And all that's left is for our team to wrap up their conclusion. Could this have actually been an act of God? Could he have made it rain on the one and only day that they had to perform this stunt? And were they so stupid that they still performed it in the rain and never came back on another day to do it when it was dry? That is something they seem to be suggesting. Let's hear it from themselves. Was this intentional? Did they just soak the ground beforehand so it didn't kick up so much dust to make it less obvious? Or was this an act of divine intervention where God literally decided to rain on their parade and expose them as the frauds that they were? Outstanding conclusion. Ladies and gentlemen, there's only one thing left to say. This message has been brought to you by the Flat Earth Institute of Science.